Welcome, Welcome to, to You Ask For it. it. I'm Coach Myrna. I'm Coach Dan Williams. We're glad to be here today. And today we are going to share with you our version of why people repeat the past. We have a question that came in from... From Brazil again. Elaine right. has been always from Brazil. Right. And this woman wants to know why she's repeating herself. Why she's having the same kind of relationship over and over again. And why she's having the same kind of uh, emotions over and over again. So we decided to get together again for another episode of You Ask For You Can Answer That Question. Why we repeat, we repeat the past? Okay. So, so Myrna, why do we repeat the past? Okay. Well... What happens is the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. When you are in a relationship with someone and you come out of that relationship with someone and there's something that you don't like about the relationship, the, re the reason the relationship ended, for instance, you're gonna say to yourself, the next relationship that I go into, I am not going to want this particular type of person, <laughs> whether it's you know someone that stole from you, whether someone that cheated on you, whether you felt that the person wasn't able to cook or whatever your problem was, we mentally say to ourselves, in my next relationship, I don't want that. But what happens with the law of attraction is that whatever you think about, you bring about. I know it's cliche but it's true. So whatever you spend your time focusing on, whatever you, you spend time saying, I don't want this, that's what you're attracted. So the best way to not repeat the past is to interrupt that pattern. You know, we go out every day and we look at things that we like mm -hmm. and we look at things that we don't like. Right. So there's nothing wrong with contrast because contrast is how we evolve. Contrast is how we get better. And how we how, and also we learn. We learn through comparison. And so we, we need the contrast. You yeah. need the contrast. So there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't want that. But that's about all you need to do. You need to identify it and then concentrate on what you do want. So when you concentrate on what you do want and you focus your energy and your time on what you do want instead of what you don't want, you interrupt the pattern and then the perfect relationship is going to come to you instead of recycling. And hopefully he knows how to cook, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's or my she, take. Yeah, no, what is, what is, how, no, what do you, why do you think? I never thought about like finding somebody who cook. I, I didn't find the, the person who cooks in my, now I'm not going to have another person who, who doesn't know how to cook. cook. Never thought about it. Just yeah. so you know, I don't know how to cook. <laughs> but I cook amazing breakfast though. All right. I am the breakfast now. Well, I'm talking about men, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, a man might want or even Whoever, you know, might say, you know, I want somebody to, to cook, right? That's just an example. I didn't want to go with the most popular one, mm -hmm. someone that cheats, because that's going to be 90% yeah. of what people say they don't want. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's interesting, and, and they still get back into that again. Yes. That, okay, I don't know anybody who will cheat on me, but suddenly, I'm, again, I find somebody who cheats on me. Okay. Then again and again. Again and again. It's very interesting. that I have a, a, my take. I, I love the subject. And I was reading a book the other day. Not only reading, because when I like a book, I study the book. And it's called yes. Living the Truth by Keith Abelow. He, I don't like this man in video. I, I think he's an asshole in video. But, in, but he writes so well. I mean, I, with the, the moment I got the book, I fell in love with him reading the book. So I went on YouTube. And I said, my gosh, I don't like this man. <laughs> but, but I love the way he writes. Okay. And he is a master writing. If he only could only write and not speak. <laughs> but it's okay. But anyway, let me go back to this. And I love what he says. He believes and he teaches, and I also believe that, and I've been teaching that in my, in my, in, uh, in my MBAs in Brazil, that in a way for us not to repeat the past, we have to learn how to visit the past and interact with the past with the mind and heart that we have nowadays. 
The problem is many times when we remember, when I say visit, is to think about and remember, and, and when we think and remember about our past, we always see it with the mind and heart of a child, because that's what we were when we lived a lot of dramas and problems at home and with the family and so on, bullying and so on. But the idea that he teaches is that when you, you think about your past, try to remind yourself that you are not a child anymore. Nowadays, you have the tools and you have the knowledge that a child didn't have. A great example, it's very strong, but my father killed himself. He hanged himself. Really? I was 11. Oh, I'm so and sorry. I saw, thank you. Okay. And, and I saw that happening. And for me, to, I was so far away. Uh, and I saw his body hanging. And I, wow. I just, I couldn't bear the thought for many years, uh, to be honest with you, until last year. Every time I thought about it, I would quickly change my mind because I would get sad, I would cry, and I would always see that with the mind and heart of a child, only 11-year-old boy. I barely knew what was going on. I didn't actually understand what was going on. Days later, it, 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 I really understood, but, but, but the point is, every time I thought about that and I remember that scene, I always saw it with my 11-year-old eyes until last year when I was studying this book. Then I went there and I saw an 11 year old boy watching his father kill himself. And in my mind everything changed because now I am almost 40 years, 40 years old, I'm 38. I look good though. And yes, you do. Thank you. You gotta say something. Come on. You gotta say yes. Thank yes. you. I appreciate that. But the, 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 and the thing is, when I saw that happening, it was so liberating because I could tell that boy that I am no longer him. I don't know if it makes sense to you. It makes a lot of sense to me because that's what we all are supposed to do. We're supposed to evolve. And yeah, I mean, when you looked at your dad at 11 years old, um, you couldn't understand why your dad would do that. You couldn't understand anything about it. But now, at almost 40, 38, <laughs> be good. at almost 40, you have evolved and you are able to maybe understand what would drive him to do that. I, and I did. That's so, so interesting you said that because yeah, that's what I did. Understand. Until then, for, my father was an alcoholic and he would beat my mother day and night. It was just awful. And, and for many people, when I told them that our lives got better after he died, they would think I was a monster. But no, it's true. But until then, until last year, I would never think about my father. Because in my mind, he was a horrible person. And, and I would tell everybody, whenever they asked about my father, they say, oh no, my father, was, he was an alcoholic, he was an asshole, he was an idiot, I don't like him. I was just being honest, and I didn't. But last year, when I was able to visit my past and see that scene, it finally, with the eyes, mind, and heart of an almost <laughs> four-year-old man, I saw him for the first time as a weak man. Yes. Maybe. I, and, I, and I felt compassion for him. Not hatred, not, I wasn't disgusted like I was before. Right. I felt compassion. Then. I finally realized he was born in a Nazi, 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 how do you say? Nazi. Nazi right. family. Right. His parents were horrible people. Yeah. I mean, he was abused yes. almost every day by his parents. He, he was spanked. He only knew violence. Of course, when he, he married my mother and they had 11 kids, oh my gosh. what he gave to his kids and wife, violence. It's the only thing he got. But I never understood that. So in my mind, he was always a monster. Yeah. Until I was able to go there. And so thank you, yeah. Keith Avalon, yeah. for that. Because so, I was able to see it as with the eyes of I am today. Very, it was very empowering for me. So I always like to say that 
for us to stop repeating the past, we have to go into our past and interact with the past, with the mind and heart that we have nowadays. Because now we have better tools than we had before. Yeah. And it's not even... That's beautiful. And that's the first time I've heard that, by the way. Um, but what you're saying is that you evolved through reading, through learning, through growing. And that's what we all need to do. We need to grow. A lot of people don't grow past that 11-year-old boy. Maybe they're growing chronologically, but they're not growing emotionally. They're not yeah. making that leap. And you're right. They turn to alcohol. They turn to sex. They turn to a lot of things to fill that emptiness. Right? And then, of course, they repeat the past because it's still with them. And that's what they're going to track. So it's the first time I've heard of you know, going into the past and revisited it. You know, I was talking to my daughter on the way here, and I mentioned hypnos hypno what's it say? hypnosis. Right? Oh, I feel so good now. I feel so good that somebody else gets to start as well. Thank you. You made my day. You have and a I'm language problem. There's I'm no not going to cut that. So, so you know. There's no excuse for me. But yeah, um, that's what, what hypnosis does. They take you back into the past because in order for you to move forward, you have to understand the reason, the triggers. And you don't, you know, yes, childhood is where a lot of us get messed up. Mm -hmm. Right, you take a you take a stroll in the prisons. You take a stroll, you know, down the street where the girls are, you know, selling them their bodies. Most of the problems started from childhood, but it doesn't always start there. I mean, you can get messed up from an adult relationship, right? Yeah, we course. all know yeah. that people carry a lot of hate, a lot of hurt because someone betrayed them, right? Spouses, children whoever it is. And when you carry that around, there's a saying that says unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to, to die. die. Yeah, It's true. So it's not always your childhood. It could be your last relationship, right? And unless you forgive that person, unless you look at them with an evolved eye mm -hmm. and you can evolve this moment that we're in is never going to come back. Tomorrow, we're evolved. So when you look back, you can look at it with an evolved eye. But it, may I? Sure. It's very pretty and it's very cute. It's so nice. I wish we could do it. So every, how, how can we do it? Look at it with an evolved eye? Yeah. Of course you can. No, just I like you just we, did. I believe just we like can, you just did. how? Yes. You just, you just told us how. You look at it from, okay, all you can think of for... 20 years mm -hmm. was how horrible your father was. 38. 38. 37. No, no, no. You're, you're not 40 yet. And this was a child. You, was, you were 11. So that's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 20 I years mean, or so. Yeah. That's all you can think of for 20 years, how horrible your father was, how grateful you were that he wasn't in your life any longer because mm -hmm. he, he didn't bring anything good to it. Mm -hmm. Right. But once you look at it from his pain, Right? When you look at it from his pain, when you look at it from the understanding that he was born into it, Nazi, yeah. that's all he knew, right? When you look at it from those evolved eyes, then you're able to forgive. You're able to understand. And that's the same way, right? You, someone did something to you and you've evolved. You have, you read something that says, hey, it's just me, right? You can't control what someone else does to you. The only person you can control it's is you. Yourself and how you right? react to that. Yeah. And how you react to it. So once you look at it like that, you're able to forgive. You're able to say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry that they don't know better, right? And that's true. When we look at parents, that you're saying some parents are bad parents, but you know what? They do the best that they can. They do the best that they know how. There's no excuse. But there are some, <laughs> honey, I'm so sorry, but there are some who are really bad. Right. And they have no excuse, right. as you were saying. They have no excuse. Yeah. Because you can always learn everything. You know, everything you need to know, 
you can pick up a book. Everything you need to know, you can, you can learn. YouTube. Right. Yeah. I remember when I got married, my husband was saying to me, oh, this is my first marriage. It's no excuse. But there, was no, <laughs> there, was, there was no way YouTube back then, or Google, right? Or there was. Yes. Really? Yeah, we've been married 11 years. Oh. <laughs> but that's, there's always books, right? Yeah, you should true. tell somebody that you don't know any better. How did he you react when you told him better? That. I told him exactly. You can find out. Talk to your talk to your friends exactly. that have been married. Read a book. You know what I mean? Be careful, be, be, but be very careful with that with that advice. Talk to your friends. That means not always is a good thing. Choose very well. Choose the friends for him. Let me say, go there and talk to John, Philip, and Mark. Hand pick your friends. Anybody, you. There's no excuse for not knowing. There's no excuse for not understanding how to be a good parent. There's no excuse not to understand how to be in a good relationship. We're talking about how to repeat the past. It's not always the other person's fault. You know, it's something that you're doing. It's something that you're bringing to the relationship. There's something that that you are the stimuli. So you understand yourself. You understand what your involvement is. You understand. You know, you know what happened, I and have, then you decide what you and, want. And to then have. you go, yeah. And you have to understand the dynamics yes. of yourself. Yes, we live through a very interesting dynamics, and many times we 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 don't always repeat our past. Sometimes we repeat our parents' past. Oh yeah, and that's very interesting. So you have to understand where that is coming from. That's why I think it's very interesting to disconnect of yourself and see yourself in your relationships yes. from a different perspective. Yes, and I think this is a subject for our next video. Yeah, how we deal with turmoils and all of that. That's true. That's right. Exactly. That's, that's what we're going to talk about next. And you know, it's interesting that you just said that. But I was just looking at a life coaching show, and uh, Ivana Van Gant, um, I was looking at her Fix My Life. Ivana was coaching a couple that had a really bad marriage, and the husband was, you know, physically and mentally abusive. Mm -hmm. And the children had started their own relationships with men, and she was saying that every woman is looking for someone like her daddy. Every woman is looking for somebody to replace her daddy. And every woman is looking for, you know, somebody better than her daddy if her daddy was bad. Every woman is right. a little too much, don't you think? Maybe mo many women, but every woman. Well, she said every woman. Uh -huh. and so many, let's uh -huh. say, say many. But what you just said is that you repeat your parents' past. Yeah. And it happens with, with women, with men. You know, whatever you see in the home, it's probably what you're going to repeat. It, it is what yes. you have. It is. And yes. there is a saying that I always like to repeat. We only give what we have. It's true. We don't have the ability to, to give what we do not have. So whatever you were, and the other saying that I like is the universe or life doesn't give anything to us. It only returns whatever we give. Oh, that is good. I made it myself. I, I wrote in a book. But I love that. I, I have to get the credits. So I have to get the credits. And, and, and we have. It's and very what, true. And whatever it's dynamics you have in your life, yes. you have to learn and ask, why is it happening? Yes. Why am I in, am I in this kind of relationship again? Why am I having? these kind of thoughts and behaviors again. Yes. What, what haven't I learned? Yes. And, and understand if there is something not very comfortable happening to you or something not very good happening to you, remember, you're probably giving that. Yes. That's why you were receiving it back. Of course. Unquestionably. 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 Yeah. Unquestionably. You know, you have to live consciously. Nothing just happens to you. Nothing just happens to you. We live in a world of cause and effect, right? What is the cause? What is an effect? It's physics. Right? They're always connected. Yes. We yes. have to learn how to connect the dots. There's always there's physics. Mathematics yeah. is 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 powerful. Yeah. Everything can be traced back to mathematics because 
we live in a physical world, spiritual and physical, yeah. of course. But yeah, um, there is, even if it's minute, there is something that you contributed to that. So consciousness is what we as coaches teach. And that's another word for awareness. Yeah. You can't just live in the dark. You have to understand. You have to be clear. You have to know. And once you do, then you interrupt the pattern. Then and, you, and you liberate yourself. It's very exactly. You yeah. interrupt the pattern. And if you don't interrupt the pattern, you will continue cycling. Every, over and over and cycling. over and over again. It's, it's how we work. I was going to say it's how life works. That's not how life works. It's, it's how we work. Yes. Yes. I want to end my part saying something that it just came to my mind a couple minutes ago when you were talking. That growing old is unconditional. There is nothing we can do about it. About. But growing up, it's optional. Yes. So we, we, we are all growing old. No matter what you do, you can put 10,000 Botox. One day, honey, you're going to grow old. But grow up. Yes. It's a decision we make every day. Yes. And I, we decided to do this show. You asked for it because we want to help you help us because remember we only give what we have yes. so if we want to give you something interesting we have to have yes. see and if we don't have we have to develop so yes. we are doing this show because we want to help you yes to grow to grow yes grow consciously right grow consciously because conscious growth is the only way that you can find happiness Exactly. Thank you for watching us. If you have a question, please feel free to send our questions to us. We're going to be happy to, uh, to, to, yes. to answer. Yes. And if you like our show, please forward to your friends, share on Facebook, sign up to our channel. Yes. So as we end, I'm Coach Renee Young. And I'm Coach Dan Williams. And this is another episode of You, you Ask, Ask For It. it.